my name is Sophia. I'm very glad to be here. And before I tell you about what I've been building with Lapper and Meat, Lapper and Meat, I want to start with some context. So we are currently living in an era of transitioning between giving our ideas for text to one in which we read our brains directly, which is about a hundred to a thousand times faster, if not more. From using centralized and physical currencies to decentralized and digital ones. We have already stopped settling down for our physical reality and started creating new worlds that we can live in online anytime, anywhere. Last but not least, we will stop filtering ourselves energy throughout our food chain and start creating whole new suns here on Earth. Now, you already knew this, this is not new. The question is, how are we applying these four principles to the system that has been feeding us, providing us with shelter, with food, with clothing, for thousands of years? The agricultural system. So let's zoom in a bit. This is a plant. Wonderful chemists, they can grow almost anything. However, if we, if we saw them as machines, we could actually argue that they're a bit inefficient. So if we feed a plant with hundreds of days of light, tens of thousands of liters of water, and millions of acres of land that amount to half of the world's habitable land, all we get is a 1% conversion ratio. That means 1% of a plant's weight is the product that we care about. Now, we are all currently wearing an outfit that to almost the equivalent of 100 bathtubs of water to be produced. So this is what these numbers mean. Not to mention the millions of tons of greenhouse gases that the cotton industry produces worldwide, the history of social uh, like the injustices that we have, the 50% of fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, right? These crazy chemicals that are hurting our soil and the environment overall. So now, we know that our agricultural system is slow because plants take their time to grow. I mean, they weren't really scaled for, or really evolved for it to be that scalable, right? We have a centralized system that we don't want for things like a geopolitical conflict for food security, we don't want plants to be limited to growing only in a single place because of environmental conditions, and we have a system that's inefficient because of the reasons that I've mentioned before. We have wonderful innovations, right, like vertical farming, that are allowing us to grow things not only horizontally, but vertically, not only in the soil, but using hydroponics, saving water, saving land. So, the gap with that, however, is that we are filtering again the sun's energy through solar panels. We had talked yesterday about the inefficiency that we have on its own. And then we are using it to grow products that do not feed the world. Things like lettuce, strawberries, kale, which is great sometimes, but when it comes to feeding the world, we need grains like rice, wheat, and maize. So this actually shows the millions of tons of each crop that are produced worldwide every year. In order to try to solve this problem, I ask myself, what makes these crops, these crops, starting with cotton? So if we go to the molecular level, we will find that it's a bunch of cellulose plus some fruit. And these proteins are important because they are what make cotton cells. So just as we cover ourselves with clothes, seeds use these cells to cover themselves and be able to reproduce and survive perfectly. What you need to know, though, is that if it sells, we 
exchange for production methods. It's just like what we learned in elementary math. Sometimes we don't need to change the order, like the order of the factors doesn't need to affect the products. And so I asked myself, what if we, what if I could take cells from a cotton plant, roll them in a glass or petri dish with the right nutrients, the specific ones, and get the same fluffy cotton that we all know, love, and wear? Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> As Steve Jobs would say, I mean, there's one more thing, though. <laughs> This is 10 times faster. We don't need like whole six months to grow cotton, 180 days, we can do it in 18, between 18 and 30. We do not need like all these inputs. We can totally switch the equation and go from 10 times these inputs get us 1% the output to using 90% less inputs and getting 10 times more products throughout a whole year. We can do this in the dark. We actually need to, so no solar panels, thank you for now. We are not using any crazy pesticides, insecticides. We don't want that. So this is, sounds kind of perfect, right? Like, why has no one done this yet? And that's actually the question that I was asking myself for months. It's actually in my like, research notion crazy page. Why is nobody doing this yet? So I chatted with a bunch of experts in the cellular agriculture industry, CEOs of cultured meat companies, researchers in the cotton field, you name it. And the problems, the challenges are actually quite similar. So we have plants which we need to get cells from, and we no longer really want to rely on plants, right? So the cellular agriculture industry has figured out how to do this. With meat, we can take stem cells and do some thing that looks like alchemy, but it's really picking the right growth medium <coughs> to grow for cells to the product that we need, skipping the whole organism altogether. And then the, <laughs> the problem comes at the growth medium, right? We know that it's expensive. It comes from the biopharmaceutical industry, it wasn't meant to scale again. There are like three hormones that we care about that make up for most of it, the cost. And these seem like unsurmountable challenges. Companies are still working on this, even though we have hundreds of them already. So I set up to buy a cotton plant, take its cells, roll it, grow them in petri dishes, fail lots of times, get more training in plant tissue culture and you know get a little bit of that cell and still working on that but i'm really grateful to organizations like the harvest the top profit and not profit in the cellular agriculture space which uh, has given me a grant to do this research to the good food institute i have joined the johns hopkins research group we're publishing a paper on the economic and social challenges of introducing cell-based products to actually develop innovations, which as you can imagine, is, is even more and more challenging. 1517 for the Medici grant, um, again, to develop this, this project. I was nominated to the Earthstruck Prize by an uh, institution in Mexico, one of the only projects to be nominated nationally. And well, this prize is funded by Prince William in England. And then I will be continue developing my lab, uh, bioengineering and plant skills at Stanford this summer at the Berkeley. Now, this is all to say that the cellular agriculture industry has been growing steadily throughout the past years. We have hundreds of companies developing all sorts of products, and all they want is cheaper bioreactors, more efficient growth media, and better genomic technologies. So the hypothesis is, if we have a growing industry here, if we have companies that are developing these fundamental technologies, then we can get them. And where is there? What is this great vision? What if we can make 10 times more efficient use of our resources? What if we could grow anything, everything, anywhere, all the time, not relying on like these geographic constraints or time limits or whatever biology has already figured out? What if we could do that?
that more efficiently, unlimited, in decentralized biofactories, instead of having five companies own the world seeds, instead of having just a few countries being able to grow these crops. I mean, Elon has gigafactories for Tesla, why can't we have biofactories for the future of food? Some people say that agriculture was the worst mistake in human history, creating a lot of the problems that we know today. I actually think that it is one of the most fundamental technologies we have as humanity, not only to scale the products that we consume, but to scale up and out as humanity. But just as any other technology, it needs an update, a great update to its operating system. So next time I'm at Cell5, I want to talk to you about the impact that a cell base a biologization of the industry is having on our planet.